So I've been having a lot of requests on how to use the node logic collision node. Now, if you don't know what the node logic add-on is, it's a great add-on that allows you to code with nodes. There will be a link to the video in the description or an annotation or in a card right now. So you can go ahead and go to that video if you don't know how to use it. But if you already know how to use it and you want to know how to use the collision node, go ahead and continue, continue with this tutorial. And if you want to learn about something different, comment it down below what you want to learn about and I might be going over how to do that in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and add the collision node. So I'm going to go shift A and we're going to come down here to this uh, second one here. So let's go down here to collision. So we're going to click on that. How do we use it? Well, the way we can use this is this first one here is going to be the game object that's detecting the collision. So we want to detect what this cube collides with. So the way we can do that is we can go ahead and click T and we're going to come down here to this BG panel right here. And we're going to go apply, apply logic to selected object. All right. Mm hmm. And once we've done that, what we can go ahead and do is we can go shift A and then we're going to come down to here. Um, no scene graph and we're going to go owner game object. So this is this owner, a, this owner game object. What it's going to go ahead and do is it's going to say, what object am I applied to? And it's going to see it's applied to this cube. So it's going to tell us that this cube is the game object. We want to detect the collision. And why, the, why is this useful? Well, if we have multiple cubes, it will be cube dependent. So this cube will be detecting what it's colliding this one and this one. So instead of just saying like a, a straight thing like cube one, let's say this is cube one, cube one, we're gonna detect, detect if that collides and all the different cubes are gonna do that even just for this one. It's gonna do it for each of their own ones if that makes sense. So each object knows what object it's applied to. It's not just saying that you need to detect for this. So uh, hopefully that made sense. But basically, add this in, and this cube's going to be able to detect what we are colliding with. All right. So what we can go ahead and do is we can go Shift A, and we can go ahead and add a. Where is it? A. Remove object. Now it should be in scene graph. Here we go. Remove object. So we're going to add that, and I'm going to add when colliding. And I'm going to connect the game object. So what we're doing here is when colliding. So this means when it hits something. And then game object saying what it hits. So what this should do is when I press play. Making sure this has physics, of course. Um, it's not doing anything. And we need the reason for that is we need to go ahead and save. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it on this file. Alright. So now when I press play. Um, just because of the way I saved it, you're going to need to go force code update. I think it's been fixed, at least I got the wrong add on, the wrong update or something, but I, this should be fixed. I'm not sure what's going on for me, but just in case it's not, go force code update and you can also go refresh nodes if it's not updating correctly. So now when we press play, as you can see, when it collides and hits it, it will delete. Um, but the only problem with this is it will delete any object. So we can add cubes and cubes, and it's going to delete all of them, and we only want it to delete the floor or do something when we hit the floor. So how do we make it actually work how we want? Well, first of all, we need to go ahead and add a property to this uh, plane. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this up, and I'm going to change this to the logic editor. So here we go, logic editor. Now the reason we're opening up the logic editor is because this is the only way we can add properties. Now, I I don't know if that's possible, possible, but I think it would be quite neat as if what the developer could do is just have it so you can add properties to the object right here or something. Um, I'm not sure how practical that is, but I think it would be a neater way. So you don't wouldn't even need to really look in here. Anyway, but for now, what we're going to go ahead and do is add a game property. And once we've added that, I'm going to call this floor. So we've got this floor. So how do, how do we detect if we're colliding with the floor? Well, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go Shift-A. And we're going to go under, under Scene Graph. 
and it's going to not be under scene graph. I'm not sure what it's under. Um, it's probably under uncategorized. Yes, it's under uncategorized. No. Um, where is it? I'm not sure where you can find it in this list. It will be here somewhere, but I'm going to just go ahead and search and I'm going to type in exactly what just popped up. So we're going to get and then we want to get game object property and then we're going to connect this in this object into this object so what it's doing is it's when it collides with an object it's saying get the object the get the game object property floor and the reason we can use this to detect is if it does if this let's say because this is the first thing it's going to collide with the first thing it's going to collide with is this cube if it collides with this and it says um, get this and it goes to get it and it's not doesn't have anything it will default to none now you can have it default to all different kinds of things but what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add another thing in so we're going to go shift a and we're going to come here to this one right here i'm going to come down to not none so what this will do is it will take in a value and if the value is not equal to none then it's going to output a a pulse basically and so we could connect that in there and what it's going to go ahead and do is when it collides it's going to you see it won't delete it we should be able to delete this and as you can see what it's doing is when it collides with that one it's saying to this there is there is no game object there is no property that's equal to floor and this says um well if it's not none in this case when it's it's not none here because it has a property it has a value then it's saying um go ahead and run this one right here so if that makes any sense so there we go that's a basic thing but let's say you want to set the property to something else i want to set this floor property to another number so let's go ahead and change this to an integer and i'm going to go ahead and click this so this is going to print debug property uh, it's going to print what this property is on the screen and the way we can do that is we can also come up here and go show debug properties we need to click both of those once that's done as you can see in the corner it shows up so what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to add a shift a set and we're going to go set game object property and we're going to go ahead and say if this works if we collide with something which is the saying if we collide with something with that property and we also want to come down here to where it says game object and we want to connect that up so the object that collides with when it's colliding with one with that property what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set that uh the proper we need to tell which property to do it so we're going to be doing floor we're going to set that to whatever we want to set it to so you can plug something in here so you could get a property from another object or something or wherever you want um in our case we're just going to add change it to an integer and we're going to say 10. and what this should do is it's going to when it collides with it it's going to set the integer to 10. so instead of removing it i'm just going to get rid of this and what you should see now is this will change it to 10. so there we go you're setting a property you're doing something useful with a collision you can even get where it coll collided with and then you can hook this up to more advanced stuff to do even more advanced stuff but it's not quite as simple just to detect a normal collision with a normal object as the logic bricks but it, the, the whole reason for that is it gives you a lot more flexibility so you can have the logic bricks or you can have this add on logic bricks they are not flexible but they're a mo lot more easier to do those basic kind of things you can't even do things like this with the uh the logic bricks without python so it, it's really what you want to use if you want to go for really really simple go ahead and use the logic bricks if you want to use more advanced go ahead and use this it's going to be a bit harder to do those simple tasks but the advanced tasks actually be a lot easier to do than with logic bricks so if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects i do come out with a new tutorial every single week on how to do something different in the blender game engine i've been really focusing on this node logic add-on 
for uh, this little bit and probably a bit more. I really do like this add-on. So if you want to learn something on this add-on and how to do something with this add-on, go ahead and comment down below because I'd love to know what you'd like to learn with this add-on because I really, really do like it. So go ahead and comment down below. Have a great week blending and I hope it's helped everyone that wants to know how to do this kind of thing with the collision. So goodbye.